I'm Ranger Mar, and today I'm here with Ranger Lauren. Welcome to the five things you should know about the Boston National Historical Park. I'm here at the Bunker Hill Monument. Today we will be discussing the colonial officers who commanded the militiamen at the Battle of Bunker Hill. So here are the five things you should know about the colonial officers at the Battle of Bunker Hill. When you think of America's first commander-in-chief, who comes to mind? No doubt, George Washington. But when the Battle of Bunker Hill took place on June 17, 1775, George Washington was not yet in Massachusetts. He's in Philadelphia. In fact, on the very same day, the colonial militiamen assembled under Colonel William Prescott to march to Bunker Hill, George Washington was attending the Second Continental Congress making a speech to accept the commission as Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army, which had been established only two days prior. General Artemis Ward was the first Commander-in-Chief of the American Revolution. He's the George Washington of Bunker Hill. John Adams described Artemis Ward as, quote, universally esteemed, beloved, and confided in by his army and his country. Yet Artemis Ward never stepped foot on this battlefield. Due to persistent poor health, he commanded from his headquarters in Cambridge, leaving the on-field commanding to the likes of Colonel William Prescott. On the evening of June 16, 1775, Private Peter Brown recalled, quote, We were called on parade at 6 o'clock for a march somewhere, but we knew not where. Colonel William Prescott's original orders were to fortify Bunker Hill, but that's not where he and his men ended up. The accounts from that night vary on to why Prescott decided to bypass Bunker Hill, which sits about a quarter of a mile behind me. Whether it was chosen on purpose to provoke the British into attacking or an accident due to the unfamiliarity of the land, Prescott and his men found themselves here on a different hill which is about half the height of Bunker Hill and closer to the British Army's position. Some locals had just started to refer to this hill by a new name, Breed's Hill. It's the most iconic quote associated with the Battle of Bunker Hill, bringing to mind images of colonial officers commanding with unyielding nerve. But was it actually spoken? This quote is most often attributed to Colonel William Prescott. But historians continue to debate whether it was spoken and by whom. Colonel John Stark of New Hampshire is said to have told his men to hold their fire until they could see the British troops' white half gaiters, which were worn around the calves. But half gaiters don't quite stir up the same level of excitement as whites of their eyes. Whether or not these words were spoken on this battlefield, the message they conveyed most certainly was. The colonial officers needed their men to hold their fire. The colonial militiamen at Bunker Hill were carrying smooth bore muskets, weapons not exactly known for their accuracy. The colonial militiamen on this battlefield held their fire and then twice inflicted heavy casualties on British troops. Imagine standing here on June 17, 1775, facing an army you once fought alongside against a common enemy. Many of the officers here at Bunker Hill were veterans of and had served with distinction during the French and Indian War, which had ended in 1763. They had served in the colonial militia under the British flag, but now the British Army marched towards them with bayonets fixed. Colonel William Prescott had shown such military talent during the French and Indian War that he was offered a commission in the British Army but had declined to return back to his farm. Less than a decade later, Prescott would use this same military talent combined with a natural ability to lead and a coolness under fire to take on the same army that once tried to recruit him. Captain Thomas Knowlton is best known at the Battle of Bunker Hill for his role in fortifying the colonial left flank. Colonel Prescott sent Knowlton and his Connecticut men down into the grassy pasture land to the left of Breed's Hill. There they found a wooden and stone rail fence. Knowlton fortified this fence to create a barricade and then twice repulsed British General William Howe. 
Thomas Knowlton's impressive display of leadership on this battlefield did not go unnoticed. One year later, in 1776, General George Washington was in desperate need of military intelligence regarding the movement of enemy troops. He called upon Thomas Knowlton to form and lead an elite regiment known as Knowlton's Rangers, which would be responsible for reconnaissance and intelligence gathering missions. Knowlton and his Rangers became America's first spies. The colonial officers at Bunker Hill were ultimately forced to retreat. Despite the loss, they proved to the British Army early on in the American Revolution that colonial officers not only had military talent, but were men who led by example, exhibiting fortitude, courage, and resolve on this battlefield. On behalf of myself and Ranger Mara, we want to thank you for joining us today at Boston National Historical Park for five things you should know about the colonial officers at the Battle of Bunker Hill.